Hi there. My name is Craig and I am co-owner of Covert Investigative Services, a full-service private investigation company in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. The information in this vidcast should be valuable for employers and insurance agents. I will cover some basic signs of fraud related to claims of personal injury. We've determined these are some common things to be on the lookout for, as seeing them may be an indication of fraud. Insurance adjusters we've worked for say that what we should be on the lookout for is excessive claims. What we mean by excessive claims is when a claimant takes what is likely a minor accident, for example, a slow impact fender bender or a slip but no fall, and then suddenly they're claiming a need for disability benefits. In short, if the claimant is exaggerating the cause of damage beyond any reasonable excess, it is a good sign of fraud. Another sign to be on the lookout for is someone complaining about or repeatedly filing the same personal injury claim or the same type of injury over time. Either the claimant has never fully recovered or has a propensity for re-injury or he or she simply hasn't learned that doing some things may cause injury to them. A private investigator can interview witnesses, complete a security risk assessment, or survey the individual to determine the causes of the problem. A third possible sign of fraud is lack of witnesses or, on the other hand, when witnesses are close relatives or friends of the claimant. This may be a sign of staging or intentionally causing an accident. While it may be hard to prove fraud in the absence of witnesses, an investigation of the equipment and scene of an accident can help mitigate any potential blame on the organization, so hire a PI to conduct a full investigation of the scene. While an independent review and audit of the situation is going to be useful, another thing that you should be looking for, and this is one of the primary reasons most claimants get caught, is behavior that is inconsistent with the type of injury. For example, the victim claims that his or her injury does not allow him or her to complete certain tests, but then drops into conversation certain everyday life activities that would require that type of mobility. A professional PI will be able to obtain high quality evidence of a claimant's inconsistent behavior. As surveillance specialists with over 35 years of experience, Covert Investigative Services knows what to look for. We're looking for use of an injured body part freely outside of work, moonlighting at other jobs, or completing tasks that are inconsistent with the injury. This information will be valuable in a court of law when a claimant must explain how he or she is able to do this type of work outside of the work situation in which they are supposedly unable to perform. The following point is a logical extension of the previous one. If there is a doctor involved in a case, it is important that the person that's injured follow the doctor's prescriptions. If a claimant does not seem to be following a doctor's prescriptions, he or she may be further injured. Your business or shareholders should not be responsible for paying for any type of re-injury or an exacerbation of an injury due to a claimant's negligence. So if you are suspicious that a claimant is not doing what is necessary to heal, this should be documented. It may not be right out fraud, but it is a type of fraudulent activity. Also be wary of doctors who have a reputation for supporting a large number of claimants. In cases where you have a large number of claims filed by a particular doctor, it is time to look into both the individual making the claim and also the doctor. One thing that private investigators are good at is pretexting, and in the case of a doctor filing a large number of claims, this would be a perfect practice to engage in. This involves actually pretending, for example, that we are a patient and seeing how the doctor responds. Another sign to be on the lookout for, and this is the last one in this vidcast, is whether or not a claimant is willing to cooperate with an investigation. The point is that if a person has nothing to hide, he or she will be willing to cooperate in order to get through the process faster. On the other hand, if the claimant is not willing to cooperate with an investigation, it raises a few red flags that we should look into. In conclusion, we would like to remind you that we are not implying that any of these points are definite signs of fraud related to personal injury claims or workers' compensation. But if you suspect fraud, trust your intuition and seek the advice of an experienced and licensed private investigator to help you out.